Hi there, it's Andrea, and this is the fourth video in our Reiki 101 series where I'm trying to put some educational information out about Reiki. So whether you're Reiki curious or you're already a practitioner, I think there'll be some value here for you in this series and perhaps some new perspectives. Are you ready to demystify Reiki attunements? They're a pretty popular topic and they're often not talked about too much. So we're going to take some time and we're going to talk about it right here in this video. I hope to answer some of the common questions about attunements. In our last video, I talked to you about energy healing and Reiki, how they're alike, how they're different. And the attunements are one of those big reasons that Reiki is set apart from other energy healing modalities. What is an attunement anyway? Well, it is a central part of Reiki training, as I just said a moment ago. Sometimes it's called an initiation, reju, or a placement, or even an ignition, but I'll talk more about that later. The bottom line is, no matter what we call it, it's the purpose of activating a person's ability to channel Reiki that is consistent among all styles and lineages. It's the attunement that sets Reiki aside from other energy healing modalities, because Reiki cannot be learned just by reading a book or Googling about it and reading what you find online. Once a person receives an attunement, they can then tune in and channel the Reiki energy for themselves and other people. Attunements are given by a Reiki master teacher in a Reiki class. And although it's optional, many do suggest preparation before a Reiki attunement is received. Leading up to an attunement, teachers will often suggest the student have quiet time turn off the news, and perhaps meditate more, drink more clean water, eat more fruits and vegetables, and also refrain from caffeine and alcohol. Rest assured, though, the attunement will work regardless if you do these preparations or not. What I've found in my own years of practice and teaching is that those preparations will often allow the student to feel the energy a little bit more easily through the attunements. But that's really just a generalization. Follow your guidance before you receive an attunement and do what feels right for you. As I said, it'll all work in the end. Whether you eat something that maybe isn't as good for you as something else might be, you're not going to inhibit your ability to channel Reiki energy just because of that. A lot of people ask what the attunement process is like. The actual process can vary by teacher and also by style and lineage. Usually the student is either seated or lying down and they're just relaxing as the Reiki master teacher performs a set of specific steps. Depending on the style of Reiki and how the Reiki master teacher is teaching, attunements can be given individually or offered to a group of students all at the same time. What's actually happening during the attunement is that energy pathways in the student's body are activated and opened. This allows the student to begin receiving the Reiki energy and transmitting it, either in person or over distance usually at the second level of training, distance comes into the equation. What a person can experience during the attunement process can really vary. There's no right answer and no wrong way that an attunement goes. One type of experience isn't valued or more powerful when compared to another. Everybody's just different. Because the attunement process works with a student's energy and their spiritual consciousness, different experiences are often reported. These can be a warmth, tingling, deep relaxation. For myself, it was very cold most of the times I've received an attunement. I'm not the only one. It's just not as common as some of the other experiences. A student might also have an emotional release or emotional response. They might cry or even laugh. Sometimes they undergo healing during the attunement. Sometimes they might see lights or colors, even with their eyes closed. They might even see spiritual guides or enlightened beings. Everybody has their own unique experience, and every time the attunement works. Sometimes an attunement can cause a reaction. That's because it's a healing process, and also the energy system of the body has undergone some changes, good changes, but sometimes will release toxins, emotional toxins, Old patterns of thoughts and behaviors might be no longer in resonance with a person's energy and consciousness. 
We can have physical detoxification as well. Students are encouraged to rest, to drink a lot of water, listen to their bodies and their intuition, perhaps journal. And above all, remember that whatever you experience after the attunement, it's a good sign because that means you're shifting and changing and evolving in powerful ways. Everything will settle down. And of course, you've got Reiki now, so you can always do self-Reiki after your attunement to help yourself. One of the most exciting things I hear from students after attunements is the development of intuition. And a lot of people do report this, probably a topic for a video later on in the series. One last thing that people often report is just feeling more compassion, more empathy, and perhaps oneness with nature, with life, and with others. Once a person is attuned to Reiki, it's for life. You never have to be reattuned to be able to connect and channel the energy. However, if you repeat attunements, it's beneficial. It helps you with healing. It strengthens your connection, which students often like. Sometimes they'll set Reiki aside for a little while, and having an attunement can really help them feel more in tune with the energy. Repeated attunements also help us with personal and spiritual development and help us transmit greater flow in our energy that we offer. Distance Reiki works, and therefore, distance attunements, or what we might call remote attunements, also work. There are some teachers out there that prefer in-person attunements only, and you know what? That's all right. Everybody doesn't have to practice or teach the same way, but just know that distance attunements work just as well as in-person attunements. A question I'm hearing more and more often, it seems, is why do we even need attunements? I mean, Reiki's natural. We have life force energy in and around our bodies. So um, why do I have to take a class? Why does somebody else have to be involved in the process? Well, what I would say is Reiki is natural. That's for sure. And we all have life force energy. But an attunement helps everyone, regardless of where they are in their life and on their spiritual path, be able to access the energy and channel it for themselves. And so what I would say is it doesn't matter who you are or what your age or what you believe, wherever you are in your life, when you have the training and the attunements, you have access to the Reiki energy. Personally, I can tell you I sure needed the attunement way back in 1995. I didn't understand much about Reiki, but I was really curious about it and wanted to learn more. I went ahead and I took that Reiki 1 class and I went from where I was to actually being able to utilize energy. Could I have gotten there on my own? Of course, probably, I guess, if I dedicated myself and studied and started meditating all the time. And, but I tell you, most people, especially in the mainstream, aren't really doing that. So learning Reiki and having the attunements is a way to make Reiki accessible to all people who want to learn it. And it's true. When Makao Usui was on Mount Karama, there was no Reiki master teacher there who gave him a Reiki attunement. He received it naturally. This proves that it is possible to gain the ability all by yourself. But what I would say is that when we refer to Reiki, we're talking about the education with a teacher that goes along with the attunements. In my view, for whatever that's worth, it would be a misrepresentation if someone called themselves a Reiki practitioner and didn't acquire Reiki from those steps. A class with a Reiki master teacher and the attunements given in that class with that instruction. They could certainly call themselves an energy healer. Absolutely 100%. But when we use the word Reiki, like I'm a Reiki practitioner, it does imply that they have completed training within the system we call Reiki. And I'm certainly not saying that Reiki practitioners any better than an energy healer or an energy practitioner. They're just different. And what about Holy Fire Reiki? That is the style that I practice and teach and the style I offer here on the channel in my healing videos. The attunement process in Holy Fire Reiki is very different. We use different terminology. Instead of the word attunement, we use the word placement in levels one and two. At the master level, when we teach that class, we actually call the attunements 
ignitions. And why do we have different names? Again, it's an indication of the very different process. The outcome is the same. The student is attuned to the energy and can channel it for themselves and others. But in Holy Fire Reiki, something remarkable happens. Even though the Reiki master teacher conducts the process, it's actually the Holy Fire Reiki energy itself that assesses the student's energy and level of consciousness and offers each student exactly what they need in order to channel the Reiki energy most effectively. Isn't that interesting? I really love this approach because I think it shows deep respect for the student and their ability to connect directly to the source of Reiki. No person needs another person between them and the source of Reiki. So in Holy Fire, the Reiki master teacher creates the opportunity for the student and the source of Holy Fire Reiki energy to get together. It's that energy that offers each and every student a unique experience just for them based on exactly what they need. The Reiki master teacher begins with a short guided meditation so that the student enters a receptive state. The teacher's then quiet, and the energy in the student meet without any interference or influence from the teacher. The results of the placements and ignitions are quite remarkable, absolutely completely effective, even in person and over distance. So to be clear, attunements are an essential part of Reiki training. If one studies energy healing, but they don't have attunements with a Reiki master teacher, then I would call them an energy healer. In our next video in the series, I want to talk to you a little bit about different styles of Reiki. Why do we have so many? Then I'll talk to you a little bit more about Holy Fire Reiki because I do get a lot of questions about that. And if you have questions you'd like for me to answer in this series, go ahead and comment below. And don't forget, I have a live stream coming up. It's always the first Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope to see you there. And if you can't make it, the replay is always available. Speaking of which, you can find all of the old live streams on the channel. Until next time, take really good care.